Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa salama ma ba'd Allah the Almighty overlooks the many sins and whisperings of the shaitan that we have in our heart that at times a person may think an evil thought or think about committing a sin because we're human beings and we're weak but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created us and he knows our trials and tribulations and he subhanahu wa ta'ala is off forgiving and most merciful and he azza wa jal is the one who can forgive us for all of our sins and he subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives the slave and overlooks the faults of the slave from the whisperings of the shaitan or the whisperings of our nafs as long as we don't act upon that sin. Let's listen to the hadith <coughs> of uh, Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu as collected in Muslim, Sahih Muslim. And Imam Muslim, he entitled this chapter Bab tajawuz Allah an hadith in nafs wa khawatil bil qalb idha lam tastaqar. That Imam Muslim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he entitled this chapter in his book Sahih Muslim in the Kitab al Iman, the book of uh, faith, the chapter of faith. He entitled this the chapter that Allah that Allah overlooks when a person uh, hadith and nafs that is the whisperings that are the inner whisperings of a person and the uh, the dangerous trappings of the heart as long as a person doesn't act upon it this is the uh, a rough translation of the title that Imam Muslim entitled this chapter and the hadith amongst the other had many hadith that fa- fall under this chapter the hadith of Abi Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna allah azza wa jalla tajawaza li ummati amma hadathat bihi nafsu uh, anfusaha ma lam ta'mal o takallama bih so the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam said that verily allah the almighty overlooks the what what the community the ummah of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam what they the whisperings that they contain in their hearts as long as they do not act upon it or speak about it and there are so many benefits and we will keep our benefits concise to what al allama Sheikh Muhammad ibn Saleh bin Uthaymeen rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned. He mentioned some very uh, great benefits regarding this hadith. One of the benefits that we derive from this hadith is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his fadl and his mercy and his greatness, he overlooks those things which the community of Muslims contains within their heart and I'll give you an example for example the person who hides in their heart that they want to or the thought comes in to do something unlawful maybe the person says I, I want to take a second look at uh, an individual of the opposite sex for example to uh, to find pleasure in that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the fact that the person they may have thought of doing that but they didn't act upon it and they did not uh, speak about it, then they will have no sin upon them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala overlooks this. Because we're human beings, we're weak and we're frail. All of us are tested with different trials and tribulations and, and things that we enjoy that may be unlawful for us even. For example, some people are tested by uh, by the enjoyment of the company of the, of the, of the opposite sex 
and this can be in an unlawful setting. And others are tested. Maybe they have an inclination uh, before Islam or or what what have you to be in uh, to drink alcohol or 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 take those things which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has prohibited. So this is from our frailty, but Allah Subhanahu wa Taala overlooks it as long as a person does not act upon upon that or speak about that, speak about committing that sin. The Sheikh mentions a couple of very important benefits. He said that this is the case as long as someone does not speak about the sin or they do not act upon it. However, if an individual, um, if they have some some whisperings related to their belief, related to their creed, then they have to take the alaj or the... Um, the way of cure, curing this illness from the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So the Shaykh mentions that there are two things mentioned from the sunnah in order to deal with this. He said because, uh, and and he says that if a person is that they do have a situation where their belief is called into doubt, then they can deal with it in one of two ways. The first way is that the is that the person should seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Istiada billah min shaitan rajim That a person should seek refuge in Allah from the accursed devil. Because the believer is going to be tested in his or her iman. And if the shaitan whispers to, to cause them to have some doubtfulness, doubtfulness about a hadith, doubtfulness about something, or whatever the whisperings that the shaitan uh, comes up with, or maybe some doubt that you even heard from outside, however it, that it, it comes to your heart, then the person should seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the accursed shaitan. This is the first way they do this. And the shaykh mentioned, كَأَنَّكَ فَارٌ مِنْ adu. He said, it, it's basically not sufficient to just seek refuge in Allah on your tongue, but that you should seek refuge in Allah as if you were fleeing from your enemy or from the enemy. Freeing, fleeing from the enemy to your protector. And of course, when whisperings in Aqidah, in our belief, or anything that causes us to have doubt with something from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, then of course this is something to flee from. We flee from that by seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the accursed shaitan. So we should do that with our tongue, but also our hearts should be inclined towards that. So it's as if you, you should picture yourself, the Shaykh mentioned, picture yourself, to sawar nafsik annaka farun min adu ila wali yatawallaka. He said, picture yourself uh, uh, fleeing from the enemy to your protector to seek refuge. And who is, the, who is our protector? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty. So that's the first way we deal with this, this type of waswas, you know, this type of evil whispering, especially when regards to doubts in our belief. The second thing the Sheikh mentioned, he said the second type of Doa, or the second type of medicine uh, from the Sunnah of the Prophet sallam, is that we should that the person should end that doubtfulness and busy with himself, which that which will distract them from that. So of course, busying yourself with something that's good is is what's matlu. But busying yourself with anything, anything that is that is of course positive, either an act of ibadah or either through something that will busy you in a good way to keep you uh, occupied, to keep your mind and your heart, uh, heart occupied away from the shaitan and rajim. So for example, some people, some women may find refuge in sewing. That may be a, a, something they enjoy doing. So after they seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the curse, uh, curse shaitan, the second thing they could do is busy themselves with remembering Allah and sowing. 
Because when they busy and concentrate on that activity, it will make them inclined towards forgetting about the evil whisperings that the shaitan had brought forth. So those are the ways that are mentioned, uh, that the shaykh mentioned in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So the first being seeking refuge in Allah with our tongues and our hearts. And the second way is that we should end that uh, evil whispering by busying ourselves with something good and something positive. A third benefit the Shaykh mentioned with regards to this hadith, he mentioned that it was said to a sahaba, وَكِيلَ لِأَهَدِ sahaba, إِنَّ يَهُودْ يَقُولُونَ نَحْنُ لَا نُوَسْوَسْ فِي صَلَاتِنَا وَأَنْتُمْ أَيُّوَ الْمُسْلِمُونَ تُوَسْوَسُونَ فِي صَلَاتِ so it was said to one of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, that a Jew, uh, that a, uh, a a Jew or someone mentioned this to the the companion and said that the Jews uh, say that they do not have any distractions in their prayer, but you Muslims, you have whisperings in your prayer. You have. Uh, you know, the devil comes and whispers to you in your prayer. So then, the Sahabi, فَقَالَ كَلِمَتْ Ajiba. He said a very, uh, you know, a very wise and, um, you know, something to reflect on, a, a, a word of wisdom. قَالْ وَمَا يَسْنَعُ الشَّيْطَانِ بِقَلْبِ الْخَارِبِ الْخَرَابِ وَمَا نَسْنَعُ وَمَا يَسْنَعَ الشَّيْطَانُ بِقَلْبٍ خَرَابٍ So, the Sahabi mentioned when he was, when the person mentioned this to him, he said, and what will the devil do with a heart that's already ruined? فَالْقَلْبِ خَرَابٍ لَا يَأْتِهِ شَيْطَانٍ لِيُخَرَبُهُ لِأَنَّهُ قَدْ خَرَبٍ He said, because a heart that's already ruined, then the devil will not come to it to ruin it. Because it's already ruined. إِنَّمَا يَخْرُبُ الْقَلْبِ الْعَامِرُ السَّلِيمِ حَتَّى يُدَمِّرَهُ So then he said, and verily, uh, the shaitan will come to ruin the heart that's saleem. That's a, that's a healthy heart. That's a heart that's on righteousness. That's a heart that's on goodness. Because, uh, and, and he will come in his various ways until he destroys that heart. And then the Shaykh mentioned, فَنَسَلَ اللَّهِ أَنْ يُعِيذَنَا وَإِيَّاكُمْ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ And he said, and we ask Allah that He, and, and to, to assist us and support us and help us and, and you from the accursed uh, shaitan. وَصَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَمَ عَلَى نَبِيِّنَّ مُحَمَّدٍ